To preface this, I want to say that this is a world building project, not a science project. I've chosen to change things, adjust things, hell, even straight up ignore some things that might be true about this planet. Simply because I wanted to envision this place the way I wanted to. Again, it's my world building project. That being said, I do lean more towards the scientifically accurate. So I want to use this video to talk about what a planet like Capitoline would actually be like. Starting off with... Capitoline orbits Romulus, which as you may remember, is an ultra cool red dwarf star, aka borderline brown dwarf. If you watched my previous video, you would know that stars that small and anything orbiting around them would be tinted a deep reddish orange due to the star's cooler temperature. That's gonna turn the capitoline we have right now from this to this. Mmm, look at all that orange. There's another thing that Romulus does that'll change the color of capitoline's atmosphere. The flares. Romulus, like most red dwarves, emits strong solar flares and ultraviolet radiation. This ultraviolet radiation is going to lead to various chemical reactions within Capitoline's atmosphere. This is going to result in the removal of Capitoline's protective ozone layer, as well as the production of various nitrogen oxides, most notably nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide, both of which are the main constituents of smog. On top of that, nitrogen dioxide not only makes the skies more orange, it's also incredibly toxic. So why did I decide to go with the blue? Well, mainly because you can't fucking see anything if everything is orange, right? Under this lighting, it's really hard to tell anything apart, from space and on the ground as well. And if you're actually standing on the surface of this planet, your eyes will adjust to the orange lighting, allowing for more color distinction. That, again, is if you're standing on the planet. If you're viewing it from a screen, that's not gonna convey as well. So to simulate that, as well as for clarity's sake, I decided to go for a wider light. With that out of the way, um, we still gotta deal with that nitrogen dioxide. Cause this gas is gonna bring a lot of downsides. It's linked to various respiratory ailments as well as the creation of acid rain. So our blue marble is actually an orange, smoggy cough world. How fun. And I don't wanna say like, oh, life here just simply evolved resistance against nitrogen dioxide toxicity. I want this stuff gone. And the only thing I can think of that'll get rid of that is my life forms. If I can find anything on Earth that'll get rid of nitrogen dioxide, then life forms on Capitoline will do that too. So I did a little bit of research and I found, uh, something? I found one paper suggesting that NO2 is absorbed by various antioxidants created by cellular organisms, leading to the creation of even more toxic byproducts. So that might be fun to work with, but I'm gonna shelf that for now. Because I also found two other papers suggesting that nitrogen dioxide is very useful for plants, increasing pathogen resistance, and regulating plant growth. So without fleshing out any of that further, I'm gonna say that those same behaviors are gonna be on Capitoline, getting rid of all the nitrogen dioxide in its atmosphere. This may seem like a minor thing that I'm worrying about, but again, the presence of all this toxic orange gas is due to the red dwarf flares. If your planet is anything like Capitoline or Trappist-1e, you're gonna have to worry about this too. I'm just offering you guys ideas on how to handle this. Now with all the coloring and lighting getting closer to what I'm envisioning, let's go to the uh, second retcon that I want to get into. The map of Capitoline itself. A few videos ago I shown this climate map of Capitoline. This climate map is based on those detailed by the World Building Pasta blog, which is single-handedly one of the most comprehensive world building resources I've ever seen. Literally, any planet that you're imagining, this guy probably has something to say about it. This guy is probably the number one resource we have for tidally locked climates like Capitoline. The second best thing is probably this. Exoplasm is a climate modeling software that I've never fucking used. I'm not even gonna try. It has its own limitations and faults, but if you could figure out how to use it, then it's a pretty handy resource to have, especially for worlds that aren't Earth-like at all. So I commissioned the help of Exoplasm user and Artifacts viewer Stefan Ryder to simulate Capitoline. So here's my man-made map with the pasta blogs as a guide, and here is the Exoplasm map. It's damn cold. Instead of the ice sheet being pretty close to the Terminator line, Exoplasm suggests that the ice is going to extend way into the day side of the planet, reducing the area of open ocean by a very significant amount. It also got rid of pretty much all of our hot desert up here, 
as well as converting all of our mountainous rainforest into a mountainous tundra. Which, considering the fact that I planned all of that spec bio stuff based on these climates, this is uh, not what I want. Again, exoplasm isn't a perfect thing, but I really don't like the lingering idea that my planet is a lot colder than I'm making it out to be. So we're gonna do two things to heat up this planet. One is change its atmosphere, just a teeny little bit. Currently, Capitoline's atmosphere is around 0.29% carbon dioxide, putting its average temperature at around 8 degrees Celsius. Using my fancy greenhouse calculator, link in the description, I'm gonna bump that up to like 0.4%. There's also something else that I want to talk about that will warm up this planet a little more. The planet's albedo. I mentioned in this video that since Romulus' spectrum of light is different from the sun's, ice on Capitoline is going to be less reflective than it would be in the sun's light. So despite being covered in more ice and snow than Earth, Capitoline is going to absorb a lot more light than you'd expect. That's going to bump Capitoline's average temperature up to 12 degrees Celsius, which I really like. It's still colder than Earth, which I want, but... It's not like that. So with all those changes, here are the updated stats for Capitoline. Again, looking back at it now, this all seems like pretty minor stuff that I'm worrying about. But if you were to ever take inspiration from anything in this series, I thought it'd be handy to give you a sense of what I'm essentially hand waving away as an artistic choice and give you a more probable idea of what a planet like Capitoline, Trappist-1e, is going to be like. Thank you for 300 subs by the way. If you like this series, feel free to be one of those. For the next video, you should bring an umbrella. I hope to see you there.